every step of the way, the Minneapolis Police Department took an opportunity to escalate, you know, shooting people randomly with, with rubber bullets and um, tear gas, just being terrorists, essentially, to the people. And so they, they reacted, and this sort of went back and forth, escalating until it culminated in the burning of the 3rd Precinct. That was Devin Hogan who recently wrote an article stating the fact that the events that happened last year in Minneapolis were the result of the police escalating the situation. This fact didn't, however, stop Republicans like Representative Tom Emmer from getting outraged on Twitter and posting about defunding the police and how these radical Democrats are trying to burn your cities down. But the people of Minneapolis know better. Protesters wouldn't have ended up burning down the police precinct had it not been for police officers escalating the situation on the ground, firing tear gas and rubber bullets at peaceful protesters, leading to what eventually turned into a riot. What has been fascinating, though, is the sheer amount of people who have been reaching out to me in um, support. So many people read the piece and were like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, of course. That's of course. Absolutely. But then seeing the reaction to it, we're just very surprised and like um, couldn't believe um, that people would want to try and distance themselves from it, that kind of. So I thought that was kind of surprising was the surprise that people had around the reaction. But um, because again, for, for so many people in Minneapolis, like they saw this with their own eyes, like this is not controversial to them. Police still to this very day are killing people. And whenever police kill people in Minnesota in particular, it seems their response is to call in the National Guard. When a police officer killed Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, the immediate response was to put National Guard troops on the ground. People in power, I think, are, are learning the wrong lesson from this, which is that um, anytime the police kill someone, the appropriate response is to send it to the National Guard. When and all, all that does is just escalate it. You know, people aren't going to go to their nearest police precinct and try and burn it down. Again, the other kind of point of this article was that there's a specific set of conditions that led to the outcome. And not every, in fact, probably most police killings going forward won't immediately lead to people trying to burn down their, their closest police precinct. As Devin said, they have learned the wrong lesson. Whenever police officers kill an innocent person, the immediate response is to escalate tensions against the public. Security video from the San Fernando Courthouse in Los Angeles County. This video was obtained by the LA Times and it shows a prisoner, a man in handcuffs. Uh, you see in the blue trousers there and the white colored shirt. He's, his name is Enzo Escalante. Um, it starts with him punching an LA County Sheriff's deputy and then you see him get wrestled to the ground. Um, then, though, uh, one of the deputies that wrestled him to the ground puts his knee on the prisoner's head and continues to kneel on his head for three solid minutes, um, which left that man on the ground alive, thankfully, but pretty well beat up. In Los Angeles, California, the L.A. County sheriffs run amok and abuse prisoners. That incident took place last year on March 10th. March 10th, 2021. Well, it was a reporter at the LA Times named Aileen Chekmedian um, who published this video last month, along with reporting alleging that the LA County Sheriff's Department, up to and including the sheriff himself, had attempted to cover up the incident because they feared the negative light this incident could shed on the department. The video of the prisoner assault came to light because of the fine reporting by an LA Times journalist. Now, Villanueva hinted she, along with two others, are under investigation for bringing his faults to light. 